we'll be talking about computer overview overview and computer hardware computer overview and computer hardware that is what we'll be looking at in the first lesson of this particular topic now we ask ourselves in the computer overview we ask ourselves what is a computer or what is a computer system uh, every time a student defines a computer system the student must be aware of certain aspects like a computer system must have an input a computer system must have an output a computer system must have a storage and a computer system must be able to process data so in that we define a computer system as an electronic device that supports uh, that enables computer users to input data that input data is processed after it has been processed it gives an output which is normally called information now that output may not be used immediately or may be used immediately if it is not used immediately then it will be stored in a storage medium so again a computer system is that electronic device that accepts data as input processes the data gives the output then stores the data that has been processed now that takes us to some two terms which have been mentioned there data and information what is data data refers to the raw facts what has not been processed is called data now what has been processed is called information so information talks about the processed facts that are required to support the decision making process in an organization now next we look at the characteristics of a computer system characteristics of a computer now this will justify why people buy computers why is it that many people are moving from the manual uh, systems to the computerized systems now one of the characteristics of computers talks about speed computers can process millions of instructions in one second that is one of the characteristics of computers and that is why many people are buying them the microprocessors of today the core i2 i3s the core i5s they are all related to speed another characteristic of computers is accuracy computers are very accurate machines if you give them an input they will process what you have given them they will not deviate or introduce errors in that particular input uh, the other characteristic of computers is number three which talks about storage computers can store very large volumes of data over a period and that is why they are preferred to human beings human beings easily forget uh, in storage we have the primary storage and we have the secondary storage here we are focusing on the primary on the secondary storage another characteristic of computers is what we call uh, multitasking capability computers can be able to multitask they can be able they enable users to carry out a number of tasks uh, they can load so many programs into memory for example and execute the programs at different intervals or at the same time like you can be using you can be listening to music from the vlc player and you can also be typing data that is a characteristic of computer systems now the next part of this lesson uh, talks about computer generations computer generations uh, just like we are told that human beings have existed in a number of generations computers have also evolved in a number of generations all the way from first generation to the fifth generation that is a way of classifying computers uh, there are five generations of computers the first generation computers up to the fifth we just it's just a brief coverage of what uh, computers are how they came into 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 existence when we look at the generations we have some areas of interest that students should take note of uh, the electronic device the electronic device for the circuit for the circuits for the 
uh, for the processor. Then we also have uh, the processing speed of the computers. The size, those are what students should always remember, even the storage, whenever you're describing the five computer generations. Just in brief, the first generation computers, uh, we are told that these were very large computers that existed uh, some times back. They were the first computers to be introduced into the world. They generated a lot of heat because of their size. Now, which electronic device was used for the processor? The electronic device used for the processor was called the vacuum tube. That was the electronic device used for the processor design or used for the internal design of the circuit. Now, these vacuum tubes were larger than all the electronic devices that we are talking about today. And that is why we say first generation computers were large in size. Their processing speed and storage capabilities were very low. They could not store a lot of data in the punched cards, which were used as the storage devices. Now, for the second generation computers, second generation computers used now transistors. They did not use the vacuum tubes. They used transistors. Transistors are electronic devices that are still being used to date. Uh, but if you compare them with vacuum tubes, they're smaller than the vacuum tubes. And that's why we say that in the second generation, second generation computers were smaller than the first generation computers because of the electronic device that they used. They had better processing speeds, better storage capabilities, uh, than the first generation computers. Then we have the third generation computers. What was unique about third generation computers is that now they introduced what we are still using in the world today called integrated circuits. Integrated circuits. That is called ICs, abbreviated as ICs. So the third generation, the, fourth, uh, the third generation computers used integrated circuits for the design of the microprocessor. The ICs were considered to be very small. They are smaller in size, and, and because uh, in this one, in this uh, generation, we were using large scale integration and very large scale integration, this particular generation brought about very fast processing speed and very good storage capabilities compared to the third. Uh, to, the, to the second generation uh, computers. Then we have the fourth generation computers. The fourth generation computers were even much smaller than uh, the, the third generation computers because they were still using ICs in the ULSI integration. That is the ultra large scale integration. They were still using ICs in the ultra large scale integration. That is for the design of the processor. That gave them serious, uh, fast processing speeds, good storage, small in size. Now, when we look at the fifth generation computers, for the fifth generation computers, the internal circuitry was designed using semiconductors. Semiconductors like the silicon. Uh, silicon is a semiconductor that enables uh, Sub facilitates very large storage. Data can be stored over very long periods. They were indeed very small in size, and we also have some other features of the fifth generation computers, like the introduced parallel processing. And, and the world today talks about fifth generation computers. We are saying these are computers that will be able to diagnose themselves and propose how the errors or the faults can be corrected.